work and I'm um, going through stuff on the main channel and obviously just watched uh, Santee's video so you'll see a little clip of that but good morning <laughs> just got here to work and it's been pretty much of a dead morning uh, Saturdays sometimes are Saturdays here is like a it's so weird it's like sometimes it's busy and sometimes it's not so then sometimes we do really well but Anyway, there was uh, there was some really cool comments on uh, on here, uh, referring to some things and like uh, like s we we're talking about the, a lot of things in school. And um, where is it here? Um, and this was great because this this reminded me a lot about things that when I went to school. Um, here's a mess. Uh, the comment from Joe P. And it says, uh, yeah, today, you know, there is no dodgeball, no trampolines, climbing ropes and all that, etc. Um, it, it, it sucks because, you know, when I was in school, we played dodgeball. We ran around and played tag. Uh, in fact, um, that was all. We all recess long. We were running and running, running, playing tag, running at each other. And um, our play yard had, like, all these, like, jungle gym things. You know, you could climb up all these things, slide down the poles and things, that, you know, like, you know, I guess now, now they would consider that. Oh, you can't have that. That is so dangerous. You know, monkey bars and stuff. I guess it's so sad if you ask me the way things are going. That how everything is just so. You can't do that. We can't do that. You know, somebody. You know, it's it's so. You know what happened to going out? I don't even think anybody goes out in the woods and plays with sticks anymore. <laughs> I did that. <laughs> Rode down on my bike down the street to uh, to um, the neighborhood kids, and we went into the woods in the back when when there wasn't so many houses built in there, and ran around in the woods. We built forts, and I, I guess you know. I mean, I'm just all I can say is looking back at my childhood and uh, going to school and being able to have experienced a lot of that stuff, like playing tag and dodgeball and. Um, uh, even in photography, we that was one of my favorite classes in high school. In fact, was photography and just learning how to develop film and learning a black and white and uh, how it intrigued me to take pictures and do all this kind of stuff. I mean, I even I saw my photography teacher some time ago and I told him what I was doing. You know, I told him, "Hey, I'm on YouTube. I'm doing this." Thing. He was so thrilled that you know to do all that, to learn hear that, and I just think it's so so sad that now that that's not available that I'm so glad that that's not me that I didn't uh, that I didn't grow up without that you know I grew up now with that stuff it's just like ridiculous um, I'm glad that when I was going to school that they they did those things because it's kind of I don't know kind of sucks now <laughs> Now it uh, it began to get dark really quick. I didn't realize it got so dark really quick because um, I got stuck watching a couple of movies on Amazon Prime <laughs> with that trial membership. Uh, honestly, for me, that's a pretty big perk um, that that Amazon Prime bit uh, because sometimes uh, at night, uh, you know try to look for something different it's kind of neat you you flip through if you just go to Amazon or how it works for those of you that don't have it um, but I, I didn't actually pay for it yet I, I'm still on the trial but uh, it's it's kind of neat because if you go and select Amazon video and then you go into like a the little section you know you can choose a genre um, action adventure drama or like horror or something 
Um, you can browse a lot of different uh, movies. And there's a lot of stuff on there I wanted to see, but I didn't want to buy it or I didn't want to rent it because, um, yeah, I could have gone to Redbox, I guess, but I didn't want to go through the hassle of going there, paying for it. And um, so, but anyway, I saw a couple of interesting movies. One was, was called The Hunter with Willem Dafoe, which is really... Uh, it, it, in a sense, it's kind of a boring movie, but yet it still keeps you wanting to watch watch it for some reason because he's like up up there trying to find this really rare Tasmanian tiger, uh, if that is such a thing. Um, but uh, yeah, he's like trying to get that, and he's getting hassled from the locals, and they don't like him up there, and they trash his car, and he's just trying to do this job and. Um, it doesn't really, I mean, if you're looking for a movie that explains in any detail what the heck is going on, that's not the movie, because <laughs> it really doesn't explain at all in any detail, like, why is he doing this again? Like, that's what I kept asking myself, I'm, I can't, they must be paying him a substantial amount of money to do this, because this is like, you know, the, the amount of uh, trouble he's getting into with the locals there is just not good, and then costing, anyway, I don't want to ruin the movie for you, but costing lives, it's like, okay, I don't see where, <laughs> what this, why this job is worth it, um, but the other movie I watched is with uh, Michael Douglas, and it's called Beyond the Reach, and that's another weird, bizarre movie. Like just like, and it's a more recent movie, um, and they wind up having an accident in the desert, and uh, you know he winds up being uh, Michael Douglas plays more of a sinister character, um, so that kind of was like, hmm, that's a little. But th th he still did a good job at playing a really bad guy. Um, uh, when you know, I think I always feel like you know, in that sense, and if you're if the actor is going to play a, a villainous character, if he can make you dislike him in the movie, um, then he's done a good job. And Michael Douglas definitely made me dislike him in that movie. <laughs> so I guess he did a good job. It's nice that it's. Uh... Uh, nice and colder out at night. Now, oh, there's definitely no light out here. Well, house light up there. Hmm. No critters in the gravel. Just the uh, one thing I dislike is centipedes, and Hawaii has very large ones, and I, I I just I absolutely dislike them. I'm very creeped out by them. I don't like them. My grandpa was uh, bit by one one night. That was uh, not a very fun night. And as far as the builds right now on the gloves, I am actually, um, I'm waiting to find actual knife blades uh, before I continue um, putting together any more. Um, I, I have, I have just the, the fingers and the back plate done on one, but um, until I get the, the proper knife blades to use that are going to be durable, I think because uh, it, it for me the sheet metal stuff here um, I don't think it's over here anymore but those the sheet metal blades are okay but um, yeah here it is right here it's all right but you know what this is the biggest flaw in the whole setup right now because it's it's the weakest link it's um they're they're not durable at all and when you spend as much time putting together the the whole bit and then to cheap out it feels like on the blades um it feels like a waste of time so i'm just kind of waiting um gonna try different knife knife blades and try to see which ones like which ones can be either altered well obviously they're gonna have to be altered but which ones are gonna work so that's the status on that right now 
so I'm not going to really, um, I, I'm just kind of searching out for, uh, for the blades. I did order one off of uh, Amazon, so I'm going to see when that comes in. I just ordered one. Um, it was fairly cheap. It was like $5 or something like that, free shipping with the Prime. So um, I'm going to see when that comes in, if that's even usable. Um, I don't mind taking a small gamble like that to try to find it. But uh, in the end, I kind of have an idea, if that doesn't work, what might work and what I might have to wind up doing. So we'll see. Doubt uh, when you're in trouble and you're at night and you have some kind of bacon craving, which I do quite a bit because I like bacon all too much. Try bacon jerky. <laughs> all right. Well, it's the holidays, so you know what that means. Eggnog time. Oh yeah. Uh, my favorite, really bad for you drink but it only comes around during holidays, so I happened to grab one while I was at Target. I'm sure you probably could put Devil's Cut in this and make it really good, but I don't wanna, I don't wanna get trashed tonight. Mm. That is really good, and you know it's really bad. Guy's gonna get out of here and get this video uploaded. It's actually really late, so I'm gonna get this thing up. Um, for most of you, um, probably be seeing it shortly. Um, some of you that are early risers, or maybe I don't know what time is it over where you're at. Um, okay, um, yes, I'm right here. Bottle of Devil's Cut right there. Bruce right there. <laughs> um, this is such a cool book. I tell you, I'm going to use a lot of these for, for the, the pictures for the videos. Man, I just was looking at it. What an awesome photo. I don't know if, yeah, that shows up right there. Right just at the uh, the beginning of the book of, of the John Wayne. <clears throat> and then, of course, the young Duke right there. Younger. Um, just, I can't, uh, I was going through this today. And just looking at so many of these things, it's so neat to see all these photos in there that you never... Um, and then all these letters. There's a lot of letters um, that's that's really... This thing is really just full of all kinds of cool stuff. Um, really, it's neat to see all these photographs. Um, but anyway... Before we get out of here, we we'll talk about a movie like we uh, we tried to. I try to keep it. This one here is called The Seven Ups, and some of you seen it. Um, some of you may not have. This is kind of to me. It's like again, it's like one of those sleeper films that uh, came out. Now, I'm a big Roy Scheider fan. I really dig Roy Scheider. I just think he's such an underrated actor. Uh, the Sorcerer, um, the, of course the. The Night Game with 1989, of course, that's a little bit later, but I think that was just such a uh, a total, it flew right under the radar for being a good movie. Just an all-in-all -all great cop movie. Roy Scheider plays a great cop. Um, uh, also, one of the uh, ones that I've watched many, many times just because I just kept, like, it's so interesting of a movie called Still of the Night with uh, Meryl Streep. Uh, that was such a interesting movie um he plays like a psychiatrist uh, you know of course you have blue thunder and uh there, what's the other ones that he was doing uh, there's so many that he did uh 52 pickup with uh ann margaret so but the seven ups is it's another uh, it's a total spin-off of the french connection so if you're really a fan of the french connection and uh, that movie you're gonna like this and also uh, if you're a fan of the movie bullet with Steve McQueen you're gonna like this uh, so the funny anyway while he's uh, playing his character uh, buddy again and also the interesting thing is the uh, we all know the infamous chase scene from bullet um, that that crazy chase scene where the guy is trying to uh, also shoot that bullet with the uh, Winchester 97 pump shotgun uh, 
funny thing is this has a chase scene in it too and it's like that and it's crazy and it's like the, the acting of the one guy when they almost get into a crash he like goes like i don't know it's like weird it's like i don't know if that's like if you call that good acting or not but his his reaction i don't know i just think that that was a little bit strange here's the funny thing is the guy driving the car and i and i i'm almost i am 100 percent positive in fact there he is right there it's the same guy that's driving the car in bullet uh that, that's trying to get away from steve mcqueen here he is again, <laughs> driving the car, trying to get away from Roy Scheider. Maybe the guy's a car guy, a car driver, I don't know. But, you know, during this time period, I think that was just what was going on. They just kept making, the, you know, so. Um, I I don't know, like, the car chase scene is like, okay, so Bullet did it. The French Connection has a good one where he's chasing the train, and then now this one does. So I don't know, maybe there's, like, this synonymous thing. Um, even old John Wayne chased the uh, laundry truck guys uh, in McHugh. <laughs> so, but no, neat movie. All in all, a really uh, interesting movie. I like it a lot. Um, he's just uh, he, he he's an undercover cop, and he's going through again, doing his thing. So again, if you like the French Connection, you're gonna like this. Um, funny thing is, in the end of the movie. Uh, where he draws his pistol, his snubby pistol, and I believe what he carries is a Model 36 Smith & Wesson. Uh, it changes. There's a continuity error, or well, what kind of error you want to call it. Um, he sh he's got his gun, he's shooting it, it goes from being a Colt Detective Special back to a, 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 a Smith & Wesson Model 36 in like the same like sequence, so it's kind of interesting. You can actually tell it's a Colt Detective Special because you can see they eject the rod uh, floating on the bottom but anyway i'm gonna get out of here like share and subscribe thank you for the book i'm gonna be using some a lot of this stuff for the uh, photos or the uh, the videos here i'm sure you're gonna enjoy that and uh, it's another way of me sharing some of the photos in here with you so <laughs> i'm gonna get out of here and up this load this video hey i'm all ready for my first reenactment great okay let's get the truck packed up and whoa whoa when i say whoa I mean, whoa! <laughs> I am watching. <laughs> if you have not seen the Arizona Ghost Riders, check it. Can't we get a better actor? I know it's a small part, but I think we can do better than this. Oh, man. <laughs> okay, stop, stop. <laughs>